on the next all-new episode of My Adventures with Superman. Watch where you're going! Are you uh, all right? <laughs> you, you okay? I'm fine, but who are you? The name's Jimmy Olsen, a leader at the planet and head of the Flamebird Division. You're the leader of the planet? My name's Kara, and I'm searching for someone. My Adventures with Superman, new episode, next Saturday at midnight on Tsunami, next day on Max. Episode of Zom 100. No reason to worry. <laughs> A scream? What's where is it coming from? <laughs> and welcome to Toonami Therapy on June 5th of 2024. I'm Michael. Yeah, hello. I'm Tommy. And this is our podcast where we talk about anime and other things we've been watching and sometimes also things that actually aired on Toonami. Including, in this case, uh, Toonami Rewind, the block they added on Friday where they air some older series. They they got Sailor Moon, they got Dragon Ball Z Kai, although they're already airing that on regular Toonami. Um, mm-hmm. and, and Naruto, although they're running, airing Shippuden on regular Toonami. So, uh, really the only one they're not already doing in some form or another is uh, Sailor Moon. We'll get to those later. We're, we did watch it. We're not necessarily going to make a regular habit out of it. The time's just not convenient for me, but we did at least watch it this time. But that'll that'll all come later. What we're planning right now, in the order, is we'll ro- wa- discuss the regular Toonami stuff, then the stuff we watched that wasn't on Toonami, and then, at the end, the Toonami Rewind. Okay. Yep. So, now we've gotten... Uh, we we might reorder those in the future, but uh, this is what we got for now. All right, so we'll start with regular Toonami. So we got My Adventures with Superman, episode what uh, thirteen. So basically, they end up. Uh, what are they um through here? Right. So the bad guy, the I can't remember his name. The guy who's in charge of the company that keeps me- like called a Mezo or something. You know, who keeps making stuff that keeps causing problems. Well, he has another big invention, which causes problems again. It basic, Basically, they ended up making a big, uh, it, you know, it, it they start wreaking havoc and Superman has to stop them. And then it's um, solved. Uh, meanwhile, there's a bunch of stuff about Lois try, trying to compete with Vicky fail to get the scoops on this stuff and then vicky's like hey okay well you beat me hey why don't you um why don't you work in my newspaper instead and uh well i just hope that doesn't that we don't end up with all these things with lois trying to figure it out and we resolve that thing soon um anyway base anyway uh oh and then lex just purchases out that company is like yeah now i have all that stuff that yeah, yeah, that wasn't that great of a um, explanation, probably, but uh, it was. Yeah, that was the episode about. Yeah, I, I, yeah, think... uh, sorry, go on. Yeah, I, I feel like it was a pretty cool episode, but not as good as the ones before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think it was a bit of a step back um from then. Although I did kind of like the uh the funny the part the stuff with the um 
what's this? I like I said, I can't remember his name. Look, the only like businessman guy whose name I can remember is Lex Luthor <laughs> uh, from Superman. But that other guy, I thought there was some kind of funny stuff where you know his assistant, she like just has to put up with all the stupid things he has. I I I, I always I, I you I always just like. I think it's usually funny to have like the dumb sort of like leader and then, you know, the more competent assistant who just has to deal with all their stuff. We didn't get that much of it, but the parts we did, I was like, okay, that was kind of funny. Anyway, um, so we've got, I think that's it. Was there anything else I had or no, actually the leader guy, I think he was arrested or. No, he wasn't, or maybe he wasn't arrested, or... I can't remember. I'm sorry. All right, we'll move on to a series. I uh, The ending, I don't remember things perfect. Okay, so after that underwhelming display on my uh, part, we'll move on to ZOM 100. We've got episode 7. So basically, the, the, guy, the bad guy who was formerly the boss of uh, the main character, uh, Gonzo, that's his uh, name, I think, um, no, no relate. I don't think the name comes from the Muppet at all. Anyway, <laughs> so anyway, he basically has been working, um, Akira really hard, but then like says, you know, the reason I'm so hard on you is because I know you can do great. You should, you aren't really, um, someone who can survive with the zombies. You should stick around with me. And then he's like, uh, then he kind of thinks, okay, I, maybe I will. And then he tells the other characters that, and they're like, "No, that's a stupid idea." Uh, <laughs> we end uh, the what's her name? Uh, Shizuka, yeah, the the girl. We get this uh, big trans uh, flashback about her, about how she had uh, like her father was really rich and kind of controlled everything about her life, and then she says, "No, he's doing that to you." And then. Well, and then, uh, somewhat conveniently, there's a zombie, um, attack that ends up, uh, kind of wrecking, uh, things, but they manage to beat the zombies and save the guys, and then, uh, and Akira's like, yeah, well, uh, it probably wouldn't be a very interesting series if it was just, uh, me, you know, sticking around here, so let's go out and do more, uh, and have adventures and things, and then everyone else decides to leave, um, Gonzo also, and he's just there. So, yeah, that was yep. the episode. Yeah. Um, I couldn't understand why he did all that work to save his boss and then just kind of left them there on his own. Because it's like, well, yeah, you may have saved them, but now when zombies attack him again, he's for sure going to die because he's out there all on his own. He has no protection. So... I felt like that was an empty gesture to him. You know, it was like, oh, yeah, I'm saving you, but uh, good luck from here on out. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, I I was, I don't know. I was not impressed by this episode. I realize it's not supposed to make sense, but sometimes it tries too hard to actually be serious. And what it needs to do is not be serious at all and just um, go for the humor portion of it because that's the best thing about this so if there is anything good about it it's the humor so the biggest yeah. issue i had was when we got shizuka's flashback because we got a bunch of it it's like oh you know my father was all well i already explained it and i'm thinking but this immediately come, brings up a few comparisons on some other things. The obvious one is Erna. That's kind of like the Erna from Food Wars. Her father um, was uh -huh. being super dominating also and such. And also uh, getting slightly ahead, we kind of get a bit of that with um, Kikoru in uh, Kaiju number eight. But And I was thinking, okay, I thought those worked in those series, not really so much here. And I realized after thinking about the big, there are two problems. One is that I think her um, father in Zom 100 is kind of, was way too over the top. Now you can still say that for um, Erina's uh, father in Food Wars, but I don't know. It felt like it fit the show better on it. 
in any case. But the big difference is when you look at those other characters, you see those backstories and you're like, okay, this explains things about their personality. Okay, that's why Aaron is distant and um really arrogant about a bunch of um uh things. This is this explains why Kikoru in Kaiju number eight was such a perfectionist. With but what about Shizuka's personality does this explain to us? It it doesn't feel like yeah. it really did. Now, I wanna be fair. That we only got this right now. Maybe this will be an important thing going forward. But it felt like really the only purpose it had so far was it just gave her a reason to tell Akira, "Hey, this was a this is a stupid idea. It's like how my father treated me." And that felt like it wasn't necessary to have that flashback for. Once again, I want to be fair. This might be more important as it goes on. Maybe this was a setup for it. But for right now, compared to some of these other things, it just leaves me thinking, this doesn't tell me any, this, this does, it doesn't, I don't get how this really relates to what we know about our personality. There does not seem to be a strong enough connection. Yeah. Well, what I have to say to that is, don't you dare compare her to my queen, Erin. <laughs> um, yeah, I was trying to figure out. Okay, you said, you said in the chat, you were like, there was a different show this week that did the same thing, but did it a lot better. Which you know, I agree with now, but I forgot what you were talking about. So all this week, I've been watching everything, thinking, what is that thing that happened? <laughs> I, I couldn't, I couldn't come up with it. I was, I was flummoxed. I could not. <laughs> remember what you you had said so i'm just i'm watching everything i'm like oh did this i, I was thinking oh it had to be konosuba it had to be konosuba something in konosuba happened because that was the last one i watched was konosuba so i'm like okay konosuba had something to happen in that episode and i just can't remember it but <laughs> nope nope i i totally blank yep <laughs> Okay, no, I was referring to Kaiju number eight, which also I'd like to say was mercifully much shorter in its flashback than this was. Yeah. Okay. So, we move, uh, but we'll get to that a bit a uh, little later. Uh, then we've got One Piece, we've got episode 669. Let's see. Well, uh, the characters are still fighting. They end up fighting uh, Pika. Uh, the the big rock guy. Um, for the record, his name is apparently spelled P I C A, so a different spelling than Pikachu. Uh -huh. I wonder if there's any sort of uh, how many. I wonder how many jokes people made of Pika and you know Pikachu. I'm sure there's got to be a ton. Anyway, yeah. Meanwhile, uh, there's some other things. Basically, we then find out. We, we we get a little more information that yes, yeah, so sugar that girl has a power to well we kind I think we already knew it but we saw it more clearly in action here. She can turn people into doll into like toys, which makes everyone forget who they were and allows her to um give commands them which they have to obey. And the plan is that they need to use this super they since she's always eating these grapes to put, or I can't remember what they were. I think they were grapes, some fruit that they were going to put a super spicy one in there. So she'll eat it, fall unconscious, and that will uh, fix all of it. I don't know how they know that her falling unconscious will do that, but uh, I, I guess they just know that somehow. I think that covers everything. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that that one enemy which came out of the rocks, the walls, and stuff. Uh, you said it was like a Attack on Titan <laughs> reference. I did. Okay, that does sound like the sort of thing I'd say. It did seem like Attack on Titan got a giant, you know, monster thing, but. This is one coming piece out of, of the wall. Coming yeah. out of the wall. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You're right. I do, I don't think yeah, I even realized the wall thing. I it was more comparable than I thought. <laughs> yeah. 
So, um, yeah, an average episode of One Piece. Not terrible, but nothing really to write home about. So, yes, yeah. it's it's just once again one of those things. You know, if this had been the first half of an episode instead of one full episode, it probably would have been nicer. Mm-hmm. Okay. But that's every episode of One Piece at this point, so. <laughs> All right. So we've got Naruto Shippuden. We did watch it this week. Episode 489. Not a bad time to choose because this is the start of a new arc. This one is, however, apparently based on some light novel or something. Anyway, so Shikamaru is basic, basically this uh, Kakashi is Hokage. Shikamaru is working for him. Shikamaru has to go off to do a mission thing. He ends up, um, let's see, let's see, uh, there's, uh, he happens to meet with Tamari for a little bit, who I think her, her, her new design does not look as good as her old one. I didn't even, I didn't even recognize her at first. But then he ends up getting, uh, basically he's on a mission to go do a thing and they and he ends up with two of the Anvu people who uh, apparently are unique to this uh, light novel so we don't we haven't met them before and that's basically it yeah their, their plan was to uh, go and capture I think some guy that was it I can't remember the specifics unfortunately sorry mm-hmm. yeah um the thing is about this is that uh, Chika Mario and Tamari get together, right? Yes. And I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out like how did that happen? You know, like what was were there like big moments in the show where those two, like beyond the first seat, you know, the first real tune in exams are besides that like were there real situations where they met up with each other um i'm trying to think of the best way to put it i mean there were some hints they might end up together but they weren't really particularly strong ones it was one of those things where like it was one of those ones where if you were like to say okay who's shikamaru going to end up with just pick someone so and tamari you would have just probably assumed but it wouldn't have been like you would just know they would end up together it's just oh yeah it would probably be her they did have some interactions and such i thought it'd be Eno. no she um she ends up with sai yeah i know that i just that that pairing doesn't make any sense to me. That pairing you know, did so. come um mostly out of nowhere. That had that did not they <laughs> did not interact um much. I think the I think the biggest part is uh some uh someone mentioned is when everyone was in the infinite Tsukiyomi and people are in like all these like you know great um worlds for them. One of them was uh I think Sai and Sasuke fighting over her, that was like her ideal world or something. So Mm -hmm. that at least indicated she might have had a thing for Sai, but apart from that, I don't think the series really did anything to set that up. It it still made more sense than who was the one who Choji ended up with? It was like this, like, I think it was this minor character we barely knew anything about. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this was at least, yeah, I thought it was okay. It, it had some decent stuff. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we got that. You didn't watch it, but just for the record, this was, yep, Um, the Dragon Ball. I did watch the Dragon Ball Z Kai episode that came after it because I, and I was, I, Thought it was, and I was correct. Yes, this is the this is the over nine thousand moment. Except in this dub, they don't. That was the original dub. The actual line, which is preserved in this one, is Vegeta says over eight thousand because that's what he said in Japanese. For some reason, it got changed to over nine thousand in the original dub. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the one everyone remembers. Yeah, that's that's the one that uh that they made the meme about. <laughs> mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and 
Unfortunately, also his over the over eight thousand is not quite as over the top of a, a declaration, but it is more faithful to the original, I guess. Mm-hmm. Anyway, nothing too much to say about uh, that, but we'll move on to. Yep, okay, so that's the regular Toonami stuff done. We'll go on to our other anime, and then we'll return for Toonami Rewind at the end. So, we've Mm -hmm. got... Let's see. We've got my teen romantic comedy snafu, episode 36, or episode 10 of the third season. So, in this episode, they... Let's see... They go to the prom and uh yeah that's it they they have the prom it's kind of after all that build up uh it didn't seem like it was actually all that important yeah that was very disappointing i couldn't understand what why the prom was uh, so i'm assuming the prom's only for seniors which okay but um you know, I I don't understand why they didn't sew more of it. it. It was just kind of this thing where it was like, yeah, the prom's going on, and Hachiman is in the back running the sound portion of it. And then they keep talking about this wish fulfillment thing. And I I don't understand what what this means, you know. I got to fulfill your wish. You got to fulfill my wish. Like, what? Why? I don't understand it. I, I'm so confused. And, and this season has not gone the way of the last two seasons. The last two seasons started out mediocre and then they got better towards the end. This one has just kind of stayed mediocre the whole way. And, um, I don't know. I, I'm just not a big fan of it. And the weird thing is, I mean, it is possible it could manage to pull things together, but we've got, I think, two episodes left of this series. If you had told me, okay, we this will all conclude in two episodes, I would have thought, <laughs> really? Like, this <laughs> does not, it does not seem like we're at the end of the series. And Mm -hmm. This apparently, like I said, is supposed to be the end. They do call it My Teen Romantic Comedy Snafu Climax. This should be the conclusion of the thing. So that's apparently that. So it it feels like what is it? I I guess it'll just end with the main with uh, Hachiman um, picking uh, one of the girls. And that'll be the end of the series because, you know, you you can't. I, I. because that's how some series just end. Hey, they get together. The end. We're done. Uh, I, <laughs> which, which is getting kind of, you know, I can kind of understand a degree to, I think my problem, there's, I'm okay with that in some series, you know, the, like what they call like the last minute hookup. If it's like a series that doesn't have like too big of a romance focus or whatever, it makes some sense. Okay, put them together at the end. That way you don't have to distract the, 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 like the, the people who are in this for something else don't need to like go with a bunch of romance stuff. But this is at least supposed to be a romantic comedy, or at least that's what the, theme the name indicates but then again like i said it's my teen romantic comedy snafu or my teen romantic comedy is wrong as i expected so maybe it's Mm -hmm. maybe the title was telling us we shouldn't you know um expect actual romantic comedy yeah all right well we'll see how it all ends in the next two episodes so then we've got Let's see. Yeah, then we move on to uh yeah, that was yeah, Full Metal Panic to Second Raid episode 6. Okay, so Sosuke is no longer allowed to have contact with Kaname, so he packs up his stuff and goes even though he's not happy, but that that isn't until he spends half the episode on the telephone to some guy 
and arguing things out with him. Um, then the rest of the episode is Kaname uh, on her own, and she decides for no reason at all to go check on Sosuke's thing, and then finds out Sosuke's place is completely empty. Um, this episode felt like a horror uh, movie or something. Like I was really. I was like really creeped out from this episode rather than Dark Gathering, which is actual horror stuff. Um, it it was it, you just had the feeling something bad was going to happen, but as it turns out, uh, we we don't have anything bad happen quite yet. But it's kind of obvious that something bad is about to happen in the next episode and no we have still not seen the person who i have been warning about for a while so um that part well we we've seen him but we have not met him so um yeah um i actually (laughs) i'll be honest i thought this was a great episode i like the scariness to it. It 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 it, it um it, it it kept me interested. It kept me hooked to it. And I think that that's a very good thing. But you know, I don't know if you liked it or not. I liked it. So is is a character you're referring to because you the way you phrased it, are you talking about the guy who Sosuke was talking to on the phone? We didn't see him, but he was talking to Sosuke? No. Oh, okay. No. Oh, that's who I thought nope. you were. Okay, then nope. I'm huh. I'm not sure who you're referring to then, but <laughs> we'll we'll uh we'll see. By the way, I think I said that at the start this was episode six. This I uh, correction, this was episode seven. Anyway, um as for the episode, I, I think yeah, there was some good stuff here. I think maybe some parts were a little because we already know Sosuke's leaving, so you, you, some of the parts are a little it's just a matter of Kaname finding out what we already knew but there was some yeah stuff there yeah you're right I didn't really think about it but there was some of that stuff was kind of played rather spookily as uh, mm-hmm. you could say and that was kind of interesting so Sosuke uh, is, uh, just left and um, yeah we also do see one of those girl. I can't remember their names, but she happens to go by Kaname. I don't know if they were actually looking for Kaname or if they're, that was just coincidence, but uh, that did happen. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. So moving on from that to Dark Gathering, episode 14. So they get to the tunnel um, right. And then Aiko ends up being separated from the others and coming across this, uh, girl who was apparently also visiting there because she was trying to investigate the ghost things. But, uh, and I was kind of hoping, oh, okay. I hope she's like a regular person and that she's not actually just a ghost or malevolent. Oh, you, what do you know? She's a ghost. I will be fair and say that the series did actually all manage to keep that away for long enough that I was starting to think, oh, I guess this is a regular person. But no, they were the per- they were someone who got killed by the ghost, the yeah, the evil ghost, along with the friend of hers. But I guess this has made her bad or not. I'm a little confused what exactly her motivation was. But anyway, the um the big evil butcher ghost thing goes after her. Um, Yayoi and Keitaro and, uh, well, then just kind of try to go after, um, her to save her. And, yeah, so that was basically the episode. So. Yeah. So I kind of. I noticed the, uh, I'm sorry, I just wanted to say, I noticed the titles of the episode like this one was like called the H tunnel and then the next one is called like the old H tunnel yeah it's 
it's the this one was old f tunnel and the next one is old old f tunnel <laughs> yeah you got it you got it go ahead i'm sorry yeah um yeah i mostly like this episode I, I was a little thinking oh yeah of course she's the ghost at least it, at least it specified she was actually a victim of the actual ghost ra- the, the one they were going after not the original one so i don't know some interesting things might be done with um her I, I don't know if she'll end up helping them if she'll stay a bad ghost the whole time I, I guess we'll see but um I, I don't know i thought i i actually appreciated the part that where we just spent all that time with Aiko instead of with Keitaro and Yayoi. So we, we were in the dark about exactly what was going on. I think that worked well. The, although I am having the problem, I'm kind of looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, so Yayoi, she's the one who's able to fight the ghosts and she's really strong. Keitaro can, you know, do a good job sensing them, has some degree of fighting. Aiko just really feels too much like she's just there to, like, get menaced or get... uh uh, like kidnapped or whatever for the others to save, which to be fair, yeah, yeah. I mean that's happened. I agree. I'm disagreeing. Sorry. Yeah, <gasps> yeah. I mean that's happened to Katro. Like he's gotten captured. The others have had to try save him, but it doesn't really. It feels too much like Aiko because she doesn't have any powers or ability to sense anything. So I'm just kind of looking at thinking, well, what exactly does she bring to the group? <laughs> I, I just, I'm kind of hoping by the end of this arc, well, she'll get like some kind of special power or something that bring that makes her more relevant because it does kind of almost make me wonder at some points. Uh, so, so why is she here if she is such a liability ultimately? But other than that, I did think this was a uh, yeah. I, I enjoyed the episode. I thought it was. I thought it was fun. Maybe a little um, more, I guess, violent at some points than I kind of thought was necessary. I think I feel sometimes, you know, when you're it, it work, it's a lot better to describe something violent than to actually see it, and like more spooky and stuff. And there were some points where I'm like, okay, you're talking about, you know, the ghost doing all this stuff. You don't have to actually show the guts or anything like that. Okay. Anyway, that was my thoughts. I don't know if you had anything to add. No, I really don't have anything to add. Um, it was a pretty good episode. Um, but, yeah, that's all I really, don't really have much to add. So Okay. Yeah. All right. After that, we've now got Konosuba episode 25. So everyone goes off to... Uh, they all go off to fight the, the Devil King's army... And they managed to do a good job, except for Cosmo falling for a trap and getting himself killed by a bunch of goblins. Yeah. There's, <laughs> and I need to ask the part where he's um just sitting there in silence with Eris. Did you think that like your um video had you know like the the, the player had broken or something? Yeah, I, I actually you're right. Um, for a moment there, I was like, okay, is this just an awkward pause or? Or or is something wrong? Um, yeah, that that was that was weird. <laughs> it's like my pastor did that in church this weekend. <laughs> he like he says something, and then for dramatic effect, he stops talking for like a whole minute, and everyone's looking around the room like, "What?" <laughs> and, wow. and that's what it reminded me of. So yeah, that was weird. Yeah, I saw a lot of people mention that they thought that something had they had to check to make sure it what hadn't broke, and I I had already known about that going in, so you know I I knew that it was a pause. If you do look, you can see like you know like the the kind of smoke in the background is moving during it, so it's not a, a blank screen. It's not like that kind of infamous bit in Evangelion where. <laughs> um, where you know you just um i'm not even talking about the elevator i'm talking about the part where uh Sh- shinji's eva is like holding um kawaru and it just stays right. um there for like a minute or i think <laughs> um longer than this one actually anyway so i thought that scene was at was really funny but basically um eris tells kazuma hey you know that um 
those artifacts that Chris, that Chris mentioned that you should get, you should, uh, I want you to get, I also want you to get them. So anyway, Cosma, um, comes back. There's, um, uh, let's see. Yeah, he comes back. Everyone thinks the other characters are really, um, good in Cosma, but not so much Cosma because, you know, he probably got killed. Ultimately, they uh, do find out that one of Iris's, Iris, Eris, their names are too similar. But uh, this thing Iris had has the, is one of those special artifacts. It has the ability to swap people's bodies. Uh, it's able to activate because it's written in Japanese so Cosmo can read it. So he and Iris swap um, bodies. Iris uh, wants to use the opportunity to leave the palace without needing to, like, any sort of um, like guards or anything. Cosma uh, initially uses it just to try to boss people around, but then of course, because he's Cosma, he thinks, "Oh wait, I'm in a girl's body. I can use this to um to see like the other girls in the bath." But then, of course, just b- before he's actually able to get anything real out of uh, it, I mean, he comes close, but the the thing gets undone and he gets warped back. And then, um, and then, unfortunately, it turns out that Iris and Megamine were kind of being dumb, and they end end up uh, in provoking some guys, and Cosmo gets beaten up. It, it was not entirely clear that they did switch at that point, back at that point, but they did. That that was Cosmo at the end, um, there when he gets beaten up. Oh, was yeah. Oh, that's disappointing. Well. Um, I thought it was a great episode, except for the forced romance between Cosmo and Megamine, which I think is stupid, and um, uh, I think it's kind of wrong, too. And um, But aside from that, it was really funny with them switching bodies like that, and Cosmo uh, getting to do all these things. And yeah, there's some fan service there. Um, but, um, yeah, I thought this was a really funny episode, although Aqua really didn't do anything. But I guess he is kind of useless anyway. But but she usually isn't useless in humor. You know, she, she may be useless, but she's not useless when it comes to providing humor. So, um, yeah. Uh, that's, that was a great episode, I thought. Okay. I'm a little, you mentioned something about Megumi and Kazuma. What did you mean by, when you said it was wrong? Oh, she's so much younger than him, it, you it, know? Isn't she only three years younger than him? The, the wiki tell, the wiki tells me that their, um, uh, ages at the start of the series, he was 16, she was 13, and then, uh, at the end, of uh, one year has apparently gone by from start to end. He's 17 and she's 14. So that's a three-year gap. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, yeah, we do get some uh, some fan service stuff. Not the worst we've seen from Konosuba, but still kind of felt... <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, so we're supposed to dislike Kazuma for wanting to, you know, see the girl scantily clad... Except you're showing that to the viewer for the exact to to like make them feel the same way that Cosma is trying to feel. So it that that's like very weird when you think about it. Oh man, Cosma, he's such scum. Anyway, I hope you enjoy um looking at this yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Any um. But yeah, there were some funny bits here. The the conversation with Eris was uh pretty was pretty funny there. Yeah, there there are just some good jokes here, a lot of funny things with the characters and uh yeah, we of course have the part where everyone's impressed by Megumi's explosion because it's so strong. And they're like, "Oh well, man, we want to see what other advanced spells you have." And she, you know, just has to come with, up with a way to get out of it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, not too much to say exactly other than the fact, yeah, it, it was mostly pretty funny, some kind of unnecessary fan service, but other than that, it was uh, decent enough. Okay, so, lastly, Kaiju number eight, 
episode four. So anyway, uh, let's see what we got there. So, um, Kafka is still in the thing. Uh, Reno comes up with a plan. Okay, I'll just, you know, you, I'll just carry you around on my shoulders <laughs> so they can keep going. They try to help sir. out. Sorry, what? Sir. Okay, sir. Yeah, because he always calls him sir. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Kikoru, um, but Kikoru ends up basically dominating it by beating every one. Uh, we do f- so anyway, but then it uh, well, it wouldn't be a shonen exam arc if everything went normally, because <laughs> they almost never do. They always get interrupted. I think. Yep. I think. Let me think. Exam marks. I mean, okay, There's there's been some, but they do have a propensity for getting um, interrupted. Not quite as often as tournament arcs, though. Yeah. What was... What, did the tuning exam count as a tournament arc or a um, exam arc? <laughs> Naruto. Or do you even remember uh, that? No, I, I know what you're talking about. I just don't know what the classified as. I think it's kind of both. Mm. Okay. So, yeah, it interrupts both um, of them. I feel like one of the few things, um, Yu Yu Hakusho, their dark tournament dark. That actually just goes all, I, I, that's like the exception everyone points to. There's a there's a tournament. It goes all the way to the end. No, no like, interruptions. I guess My Hero Academia's tournament also um, went through to the end. Anyway, back to Kaiju number eight. So, it, well, I guess technically the exam did go all the way to the end. It's just then uh, another, uh, this a super-powered Kaiju shows up, which uh, Hikoru isn't able to beat. We get flashback where we find out, yeah, her father was like some super general guy who basically put really, really high expectations on her, which is, well, it did uh, make her really strong, but also so much of a perfectionist that she's not that she thinks she has to fight the thing uh, herself even though it's so much stronger anyway the good news is that just bef- for her is just before she's about to be killed Kafka shows up transforms manages to beat the thing there's kind of a funny bit where he like just like says please don't tell anyone about this <laughs> and that um and but uh, ultimately he uh ends up uh, saying she uh, beat it, so she gets a credit for that. And thus the... Oh, yeah, and we also do find out that one of the kaiju guys we saw at the end, this is the smaller ones, is like, yeah, yeah, it's a kaiju that can imit- imitate humans, or maybe it's a human that can Im- that can turn into a kaiju. It's, it's not quite clear yet which one it is, but we had, mm-hmm. I guess they wanted to tick off another Attack on Titan parallel. <laughs> and... Yep, that is basically our episode. Yeah, I thought it was a great episode. I like Sinomia's backstory and her attitude and everything about her. She's become a pretty good character pretty fast. It's, um, they usually take a while for me to like someone. I, I, did I like Aaron and Nakari from episode one? I wish I could go back and figure that out. I, I probably did, but I don't I, think you did. But some of that might have been because I was um complaining about how I didn't like her dub voice in the early episodes. Oh right, and yeah, and it was like I complained about Food Wars all year long, and then when it came to my <laughs> my top ten, you know our. Thing at the end of the year, I put Food Wars number one, so I complained about it for all year, and then it was like, you know, that was the best thing I watched this year. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, yes, Nomia, see, yes, he's a good character, and uh, yeah, there's a few cliches in this thing, but right now I'm really enjoying it, so I'm not going to complain. I think it's a keeper at this point. Um, it's, it's at least not totally cliche. So, uh, and, and, you know, it does subvert a few of the usual Sonin tropes. So yeah, I'll give it credit for that. Um, 
I, I just hope it isn't going to be Sir and Sonomia uh, hooking up anytime soon, because I don't think romance would, <laughs> at this point, be a good idea. So uh, let's let's stay away from the romance, and I'll keep liking this. So would you like me to tell you what happens in regards to that? Oh, if what? No. Okay, you don't want me to tell you if there is or is not any romance no. stuff between them. Okay. No, I don't. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Okay. Okay. I'll figure it out on my own. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, all right. It just sounded like the kind of thing you wanted to know, so you would like, you know, either know to like that would be happen, <laughs> or, or be able to think, oh, well, that's not an issue if they don't. So, okay, I will not tell you um which way it goes. Anyway, so. Yeah, that, that was fun. It, there are a lot of cliches when you look at it, but honestly, a lot of times, the thing about cliches is, oh, while some of them are usually just a, a case of just being bad, but a lot of times the reason things are cliché in that commonplace is because they're actually decent ideas. The problem is just mm-hmm. that when so many people use them, they get overused. But they still have their place and can work well. I mean, bl- a lot... Black Clover is really cliche. I still think it works for the most part pretty decently just because there's a certain energy and almost kind of genuineness um, to it for the most uh, part. For example, that's that's the one that I've seen a lot of people say, yeah, it's really cliche, but it, it manages to work. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's funny that it, uh, I was reading about this show from the 80s named Hill Street Blues, and it was like, like people say you watch it these days and it looks like totally cliche. But at the time, it, it, it really created all of the tropes in police shows that exist today. So if you go back and watch it, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. But it was the show that created those cliches and. That's what made it such a uh, iconic program. So, yeah, I I understand that you can use cliches to your advantage at times. You know, tropes aren't bad things. They they can be good. It just whenever you overdo them or if you attack on Titan them <laughs> that uh, <laughs> that's when you have problems. I want I want to say I in regards to the attack the attack on titan because there are so many parallels between this and attack on titan but at the same time regardless of what you like think about the qualities they're still two very very different shows like uh mm-hmm. in, uh like in terms of content uh like well no not kind of, what was the right word tone tone is very very different even though like look okay it's I, in, it's a world they're being attacked by giant monsters there's some people who uh, fight the giant monsters and they use special gear to do it. There's uh, there's a, the main character want, um, suffer tragedy in the past because of the giant monsters, so he wants to fight the giant monsters, and then he gets the power to turn into, well, he, he doesn't turn giant, but he turns into one of the monsters anyway. That um, mm-hmm. And, you know, oh, and yes, there are also some of the giant monsters are actually aren't like mindless, but actually seem to like aren't necessarily people, but at least, you know, can uh, like turn into people. And I just realized I'm sorry if I just spoiled a bunch of stuff from Attack on Titan to the listener. Uh-huh. But but there's that you can find other things, but it's, but they're just still such very different shows, which shows that a lot of times it's it's not the concept. It's the execution that matters in terms of a lot of things. Mm. Now, the, the interesting thing about Hill Street Blues is you were talking about that. I remember reading um, uh, this was a while ago when I was like kind of looking into when I was when I was because uh, I, I was a um, communication arts uh, major in uh, college well, that was one of them. The other was English, but was with the um, what was it? Uh, what was it? There was like two versions of it. I was on the one that was more on like film and production, and of course, uh, my college major ended up having basically nothing to do with the actual job that I have now. <laughs> but 
it in fairness it did apparently um start me at a higher uh pay grade so that's something anyway the the point i was trying to make was at the time hill street blues was actually as i understand very much a subversion on a lot of things because prior because so many seri- like before it like the the main one you would think of would be something like dragnet a, a series that was pretty simple and kind of straight forward in how it worked you know okay there's a mystery there's some bad guys we got to uh basically uh ca- solve the mystery and capture them and that's the end whereas hill street blues did more things i I don't know if I want to say the term is necessarily that it, with more, I guess, morally gray things, more, it's not like you just have one episode and there's just one plot. Everything in the episode relates to that plot. There's multiple plots in each episode that are going on with different characters and, and that sort of, and there's greater right. complexity. That That was like the big change it made and you started seeing more, of that sort of thing in other police shows. So it's one of those things where the series was new and did a lot of um, like uh, new things, and then everyone just did them, and now it's just commonplace. <laughs> yeah, now everyone does it. it it's, um, like, it's like the Neon Genesis Evangelion, <laughs> <laughs> to use the anime term. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, yep, that's all that. Okay, so that's all their series that weren't on Toonami we watched. And now, this is a part where normally we'd be stopping. But guess what? We've got more to talk about because of Toonami Rewind. So, uh, I guess we can go through uh, them. Um... You watched a lot more Sailor Moon than I did. Do you want to do that one or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, I've I've watched this before too. So, um, so first episode of Sailor Moon, we have it established that Usagi, the main character, is a very poor student and a crybaby, and she. She goes to a jewelry store with her friend Naru, who I think was named Molly in the original. Usagi was named Serena. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> which, which I always thought it was interesting that there was Serena and Venus in the show, and the, those were the top two tennis players for such a long time. But um, so. Basically, she runs into a cat, and this cat turns out to be a talking cat named Luna, who basically says, you are now a magical girl, whether you like it or not. And (laughs) so she turns into a magical girl, save the rune, and then she defeats the enemy, but not before Tuxedo Mask shows up, just for some encouragement. He doesn't actually do anything. (laughs) He just shows up and, you know, just like, uh, you know, a little bit of encouragement. Okay. Uh, he doesn't do anything, but um, <laughs> so, and then Sailor Moon wins the battle and then back to life again. And that's the episode. That's it. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, I don't think it's really fair to start passing judgment on this show until we've gotten into all five characters there. But obviously, as a starting episode, like, you know, it does a good job at explaining what's going on, but um, it's still, there's like so much more to the story than it reveals so you kind of have to wait you have to wait a while for this one and but the monster of the week is defeated so hooray (laughs) yeah so my thoughts on it so i didn't watch that much of sailor moon when i was younger because i had i think i mentioned before i had like a kind of 
I really dislike the show to kind of an, I mentioned irrational extent and yeah, it kind of was, I really, really hated this show. Mm-hmm. I'm when I think back. So the big reason, so the reason I didn't like it, one was, I think part of it is look, look, I was young. I was, so I was like, Oh man, this is a girly show. I don't want to watch that. But when, which is kind of funny because really it is just power Rangers with, you know, skirts as I once saw someone describe it. Um, but the other reason, but the big reason I I had trouble getting into it because it seemed like every episode was just the same sort of thing each um time. You know, there's monsters, they fight, monster almost beats them, Tuxedo Mask shows up and saves them, and then they beat the monster. Next episode, repeat. Um, and uh, and if the, and if you're think and this is actually the exact same reason I never got into Power Rangers as a kid. I had the same problem with Power Rangers. Um. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, so I don't know exactly how, uh, but I do know there is some continu- more continuity in the series, so maybe I was kind of on with that. Watching this episode, yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was okay. The um, animation has definitely not aged well at all. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's kind of funny that the mo- it seemed to me like the best animated part was the transformation sequence, which might be why they repeat it so many times throughout the series. If you're going to be showing it a zillion times, might as well make sure it looks um, uh, better than the rest. Um, yeah, I, I didn't watch a huge amount of it, but um, you know, I, I know I know a bunch of stuff about it, especially later on when I was kind of curious. So I kind of looked in like com- some manga comparisons. The anime is actually rather different from the manga, um, from what I understand, because the manga was monthly and the anime was like but weekly so they basically added in a ton of padding and changed a bunch of stuff and expanded some things so like the downside of that may of course is you get a whole lot of filler episodes that don't do anything but on the other hand it also um, means that it does manage to like better develop some characters so um yeah anyway the episode itself yep it was decent not a bad first episode um mm-hmm. It's uh, especially because you haven't gotten into the parts. The series hasn't actually done all the things that people make fun of it for, you know, like the the formula lake thing, the using all of the transformations over and over. (laughs) And because this isn't the original dub, it doesn't have the thing everyone makes fun of, which is the English lyric where it says she's never running from a real fight, even though she does that all the time. Yeah. (laughs) Um, yeah, I can't remember the original, like, series, because this is, this is a new, this dub did not air on TV before. It was a Deke dub that aired on TV, and that one did a bunch of edits, cut out some episodes, um, changed some things. So this one is the later Viz dub, which is more faithful, although I have seen some people say they actually kind of preferred the original just because they thought, like, the, the voices were better in it, even if you did have some edits, so... Yeah. Um, really have anything else to say about uh, that? Uh, shall uh, anything else you wanted to say? I, I feel like I talked the most for the person who was less familiar. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, no. It's it's more important for you because I I watched all of these episodes just a few years ago, back whenever I was still blogging. So. Maybe not that recently, but um, I still remember most of this stuff pretty vividly. So, yeah, um, an okay episode. I've I've decided that I'm not going to rank the Toonami Rewind stuff unless it's something that I've never seen before. So, technically, I haven't seen these early episodes of Dragon Ball Z Kai, but I've seen the show itself. So um, I'm not going to rank them until they put on a show that I haven't seen yet. Okay. Oh, dang, there was one other thing I wanted to say. Yeah, j- just to mention, just to explain a little, I want to mention um, this. It's funny, I- I've read all, I've read a bunch of stuff about the show, but I haven't seen it. It is interesting. So how many, do you know, to just give an ex- explanation of like the-, the difference in pacing between the original manga and the anime, 
So, so okay, Sailor Moon, Serena, or Usagi, she's introduced in this first episode. And then it takes, like, what, like, like ten, and then the other, like, Sailor Scouts get introduced, like, what, like, around, like, episode, do, do you, they, they take a while to be introduced, right? Yeah, every, every three, four, five episodes, you'll finally get a new one introduced. Yeah, so. I mentioned that because I just remembered from the manga. I remember this mostly because I, I there was some this review on this podcast I listened to with some people who read it and they were kind of comparing some things to the anime. It's like, okay, first episode. All right, here's Usagi. She's introduced. Next episode. Okay, next chapter, sorry. Then the second chapter. Yeah, we get the next Sailor Scout. Chapter three, we get another Sailor Scout. Like, it's like right away, unlike the anime. Yeah, that's, that's the way Sailor Moon Crystal does it. Yeah, Crystal was uh, much more directly based on the the manga, as I understand it. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so yeah, might as well get all the discussion about this because it's on. Like I said, unclear um, how consistently we'll be sticking with it. So then we get yeah. on to Dragon Ball Z Kai episodes one and two. So. Okay, so we, here we get the beginning of it. So it turns out that um, so we get a little bit at the beginning, kind of teasing some stuff stuff that's not revealed until way later. <laughs> like it, it, it explicitly establishes that Frieza was the one who destroyed the Saiyans' home planet, and then in like the second episode, we have Raditz saying it was destroyed by a comet, which goes completely against what we saw. Because he originally, that was a reveal much later on, where um, mm-hmm. someone tells Vegeta that, oh, it wasn't destroyed Frieza uh, by a comet. Frieza um, destroyed it. So uh, there's that. That opening stuff was new to Kai. They also kind of did a bit of a recap of the original Dragon Ball for uh, people. So anyway, Goku's um, got a kid, Gohan, uh now who's four, and then his brother, who we didn't know about, comes to Earth, who's an alien. He's like, you were supposed to go and destroy all the humans. But, yeah, Goku got a bump on the head when he was a kid and forgot all about that. So, uh, I guess (laughs) that saved Earth. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Goku doesn't want uh, to, so Raditz decides to basically just... uh, kidnap Gohan and tell Goku that he better start killing some like uh humans to prove himself. Goku ends up teaming up with Piccolo, uh who was a bad guy, but that was all in Dragon mm-hmm. Ball. So if this was your introduction to the series like it was for most people because this aired first, you'd be wondering, wait, where is this who a guy? Like what who is he? <laughs> but anyway, so then they decide to go and uh take him um down and yeah, that's basically our episodes. It's yeah. Comparing these to me is I would because I was looking at these and I was thinking about how the first episodes compare, and it's it's a little harder to compare for Dragon Ball Z Kai because this was again a continuation of the original Dragon Ball. So a lot of this is about establishing what characters have been up to, which is again weird because to a lot of originally this was in the U.S. people's like, you know, introduction to them. It's kind of surprising in retrospect that the series was such a success when a lot of this doesn't make sense unless you've seen the original series, which no, almost no one in the U.S. would have because it was only because the original Dragon Ball was only released after Dragon Ball Z became one of the biggest hits ever. Yeah. I think when I watched it originally as a kid, I just thought, oh, yeah, well, I assume all this stuff will be explained later. Uh, so, this is, I think, the first time you went through it. So, what did you think of these first two episodes? Uh, they were pretty funny. Um, I, I I can't really ever take this so seriously. So, I kind of thought it was funny. Like, you gotta, you better come back here with ten dead humans by this time tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just it's really funny uh, i i thought it was just humorous so uh yeah yeah my my general thing about dragon ball is i don't take it seriously i i just i just kind of laugh along with it and um yeah 
these episodes were a pretty good start to it. Um, although Piccolo is kind of confusing. He just comes out of nowhere and you don't know anything about him. You know, like I wouldn't have known a thing about him. I would have been so confused. Yeah. So, um, the yeah. opening recap did talk a little about him, but went through it kind of quickly. Ba- basically, <laughs> he was um, the previous... the the A major villain of the original Dragon Ball was Demon King Piccolo, who Goku manages to defeat um, and kill. But then Demon King Piccolo... depend. It's The series itself is a little confusing on whether he just straight up reincarnates himself into Piccolo or whether this Piccolo is his son. But anyway, he was... There's some strong connection between the two of them and they... uh, And he's like, I'm going to... And he decides to, you know, try to avenge his father, but Goku beats him. And uh, at this point, he's... So he kind of, like, despite... Honestly, at this point, it does kind of seem like a bunch of his statements are kind of posturing. Like, I'm only here because I, I'm only helping you because I want to take over the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that's that was a little there. I might as well just to explain quickly, because you actually asked me about this, and maybe listeners don't know, because there's a bunch of Dragon Balls, and just to try to explain, like, because there's Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, Dragon Ball Super, how do they all go together? To just go through it quick, the original Dragon Ball, it, that was its name for the whole manga, start to finish. In anime form, it was split up into Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Um, they, I don't know exactly why they retitled it, maybe because this was kind of a significant change in the series. You know, there's a time skip, Goku's like got a kid now, and such, there were some important changes and stuff. So that that's Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball GT was an anime-only continuation of the series. So at the end of Dragon Ball Z, you know, they beat the final, they beat the bad guy, they win, and then there's kind of a time skip until much later, and we sort of have a brief epilogue. Dragon Ball GT takes place after that. Akira Toriyama didn't have much involvement with it. A lot of people didn't really like it that much. Dragon Ball Super, which Toriyama had a lot more to do with, basically takes place between the like sort of normal end of Dragon Ball Z and its epilogue, basically. Mm-hmm. So that's how it all fits together. You go the, the basic order is Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball um Z, uh the Dragon Ball Super, Dragon Ball Z epilogue, and then maybe Dragon Ball GT. Some people don't like to consider it canon, but I don't know how it all fits in. That's how it all works um, together, basically. Mm-hmm. All right. So, yeah, I thought it was enjoyable. I do think it, it kind of had, I think of the three, it was probably the weakest first episode. But again, it was so much of it was just like saying, hey, you know, the characters from Dragon Ball, um, this is what mm-hmm. they've been up to. It, it, it won't mean mm-hmm. anything to you if you haven't seen Dragon Ball, but, <laughs> you know, you were mentioning how you kind of find the series funny. It's interesting because the original Dragon Ball, th- this manga, it was just a straight comedy at the start. It, it There was like really? some, yeah, there was some action stuff, but it was primarily like a gag series. The author's previous um, series before this, Dr. Slump, that was just a straight up gag series. And Dragon Ball started out pretty comedy based also, but as it went on, it gradually focused more and more on the fighting until it eventually just became, you know, the standard fighting manga. But it is interesting to look back and see that you, it's just a wacky gag series. Like there's this running joke that, um, early on where like Goku like is unable to like diff because he's just this young kid at the start and has like never even met a female. He like keeps uh, being unable to tell if someone's a male or female and keeps like kind of grabbing <laughs> at their crotch. He calls it like pat pat to try to figure it out. So some of those jokes would not fly today. <laughs> yeah. No, definitely not. Okay. So, all right, so we got Dragon Ball Z Kai. Our last one then is Naruto. It's the start of Naruto, basically. And uh, since this was the most recent of the series, naturally, it's the one that that has, like, aged the best. Yeah. Um. Basically, we have the stuff, you know, 
the nine tail fox was causing havoc and the third Hokage died fighting it and it was sealed in um, Naruto, which people knew about but were forbidden to talk about, but that made him kind of an outcast, but and which he reacted to by being a troublemaker. He wanted to so he tries to become a ninja, but he's not but he's not able to pass it because he can't do the shadow clone uh the, the clone jutsu well. So then uh, one of the teacher guys there, who's actually, it turns out, is a bad guy, tells Naruto, oh, yeah, you just got to take this scroll, and then um, if you learn how to use the things in it, they'll let you pass. But it was kind of a trick, and it's actually a super important um, scroll that has all the villages a secret, which explains why such an important thing was able to be stolen by someone who couldn't pass in the basic ninja academy. <laughs> um Anyway, Naruto finds out about, like, the backstory stuff, but, you know, uh, Iruka, but still sides with Iruka because, you know, Iruka is, like, defends him against the charges about the um, Fox stuff. Ultimately, he's able to beat the bad guy who, uh, by using the Shadow Clone Jutsu, and which, of course, is his super signature technique going forward, which makes you think, if he was unable to make even just one... But as soon as he reads the scroll, he's able to make, like, hundreds. Doesn't that indicate that they must be really bad teachers? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Naruto becomes a ninja at the end. And that's basically our opening episode. Yeah. A pretty good starting episode. Um, we, we got a good... Uh, you know, it, it felt like a Naruto episode, so obviously it started out on the right foot then, so yeah, pretty good first episode. Yeah, it, it's a pretty decent ep first episode. There are some things like, you know, I kind of made fun of that don't really make too much sense, and there's also stuff that with later things don't make that much sense, like the Hokage's able to like look at Naruto in like this crystal ball. That's like, wow, that's a really strong power to be able to just monitor people like that. Uh, and then he never uses it again. <laughs> um, there, the whole thing about Naruto being the son of the third Hokage is like, you look at this and you're like, I don't know if that really fits well with what we're seeing here. That really yeah. did kind of feel like it just came out of nowhere and in some ways undermined some of the themes of the series. But... I that's all I I shouldn't be blame I won't be blaming the first episode for things that happened later. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, on the whole it's a pretty good good first episode. It, it it explains things about Naruto introduced you to his character, does some things to help get you on um his side. It's a good first episode. The anime what I I like the fact that it includes some characters that were not in the original first chapter. Like, we didn't see uh, Sakura or Sasuke or Hina or some of those other characters until a few chapters later. So I, I think it's a, it's good for the anime to decide, okay, these are important people. Let's, you know, see them here to, uh, to like, set them up a little more. And so, yeah, yeah, pretty good episode, I think. Yeah, pretty good first episode. And I... I remember the first time I watched it, it was a marathon of Naruto on Cartoon Network back in the days when they actually showed anime. I powered through the first seven or so episodes before <laughs> falling asleep. Oh, I didn't know you. Um, what, uh, oh, I thought this was your first time watching the first episode. No, I, I watched the first seven or so episodes and then... I slept and I came back and it was the tune in exams arc. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah. There was like some super um, Naruto marathon they did back then, didn't they? Where they showed like a, a long time ago. A long time ago. 2007, yeah. I think. I, re I remember they did a lot of um, advertisements. Um, for they like didn't they call it like the Naruto Hyundai Marathon? I feel like I remember um that being something they advertised about. Let me let me check on that quick. Um, Hyundai. I feel like it was Hyundai. Well, unfortunately, I don't find anything 
um, there. But it, but it was they did have like some kind of a bunch of Naruto Marath. Oh, Naruto Hundo. That was it. Hundo means hundred. I'm checking. Yeah, it was a special event which aired from. Oh yeah, Friday. August 7th, which aired from Friday, August 17th to Sunday, August 19th, which was a three-day marathon of Naruto. So, Mm -hmm. that, of the first 100 episodes. Um, and, oh, the last episode of, it was apparently a new one, it hadn't aired yet. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's something it definitely did. Reminds me of when, um, uh, I can't remember a channel, but they had some sort of 30 Rock marathon where they showed, like, every episode of it. I, I remember this because my parents happened to watch it, and then they started watching it, and they, like, became big fans of the series. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so that's about Naruto. Yep, like I said, it's a good start there. I mean... Naruto premiered in Weekly Shonen Jump, one of the manga's mo- magazines most notorious for canceling series very quickly if they don't get an audience um fast enough. And uh, so generally, you're going to have to have a, a a decent start to uh, lasting that series. And Naruto not only lasted; it went on for seven hundred chapters. Was it? Let me um double check on that quick for all the people who are. Uh, who even care about this? <laughs> Let's see, Naruto. Okay, oh, well, I was. Oh, wait, this uh, this is this doesn't make. I'm I'm reading. I'm looking at 453. It has to be more than that. Oh, okay. I wasn't looking at the um at the final chap. There's. I apologize. No, there were seven. There were. Wow, I was right. 700 chapters exactly. Makes you um one. It makes you wonder if the author was like trying. I uh, might have drawn things out a bit just to hit that number because the final villain does kind of come out of nowhere. I've seen mm-hmm. a lot of people complain about. It's like okay, uh, we're gonna like so now the final villain. Did you think it was going to be like? Uh, these other guys who we spent all this time building up and they were fighting, nah, it's this person named Kaguya that you, that was like first, that was basically first mentioned like 50 chapters ago. <laughs> okay. That, that is at least is my recollection of it. All right. I guess that's all of those. Don't want to, um, be overstaying or welcome even more than we uh, usually do. So I guess, uh-huh. um, yeah, whether to count uh, Tudami Rewind for the top three, that's an interesting question. Were, were, did you say um, you weren't going to count any of them, or you just weren't going to count some of them? None of them. Okay. Uh, I'll follow suit on that then. I guess we can um, give our top three series for that, for them then. Yeah, so, so uh, third place this week yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this was influenced by watching the older episode, but Naruto Sipidin, uh got my third place spot this week. Um, then it came down to a first and second battle between Konosuba and Kaiju number eight. And the winner is Konosuba. And Kaiju number eight takes second place for the second straight week. Okay. Second for the second. <laughs> well, they put the, they put an unfortunate um numbering the title. Then what if it was Kaiju number two? <laughs> then <laughs> then you could have just kept putting in second place over and over. Say yeah, it's just like the title says. Um, okay. So my top uh, three for these. Ooh, let me think a li- just a little bit about this. I think I'll follow you for not um in not including Tsunami Rewind or a uh, Superman. You're going to stick with the anime stuff. This one for me, hmm. Uh, this is one of those cases where I've got like four, and I'm just trying to decide what uh, which one I should be dropping off. Okay, let's go with. Third place. Third. Okay. Third place. 
um, Dark Gathering, second place Konosuba, first place Kaiju number eight. Okay. Okay. Konosuba's, Konosuba has been first place last two weeks, and before that, second place three weeks in a row. So uh, it's having a pretty good year for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. I, I'm just constantly surprised. Like I said, I mean, if it's a popular series, a bunch of people like it. Why are they, why has like the Isekai parody, like, like, why are there, does it seem like this parodies of this just aren't being used? I guess, I, then again, I guess parodies just don't seem all that common in anime when I think about it. Like, you know, like I'm even thinking like Shonen, that's like what super popular, what Shonen parodies are there there's boba Bo, of course yeah there's a parody but yeah i don't know maybe i'm missing something but i'm having trouble thinking of any just straight up parodies of shonen series like maybe someone like one punch man kind of was like that for a while but then it kind of took a more serious turn later on so i i guess you could maybe call that more of a deconstruction than a parody but other than that the parody series there's yeah, there's not that many like parody stuff. There is some, but it's it, it's weird when I think about like the parodies. I'm like, is there some? There's probably some really obvious like parody of Shonen series that I'm forgetting about. But I, I they just don't come to mind. Like the com there's comedy series, of course, but they usually don't just go straight up like um, Shonen parody. So yeah. um... Yeah, I don't have anything else to really say about that. So I'm probably going to, yeah, like, yeah, parody just doesn't seem that super common in anime the more I think about it. But I guess parody usually just doesn't. Parody is weird in that people often like it, but at the same time, it's never super popular. There's never that many of them basically Mm -hmm. when you think about it i'm thinking about like there's all these things that could be parodies but they're usually like not huge numbers of them i don't know interesting to think about maybe i'll come up with some better ones later anyway um i think that's all those so well before we uh go out with this lengthy episode anything uh else you wanted to talk about uh i was unable to watch the Cowboy Bebop movie this week, so I'll try to do that for next week. Okay. And, oh, one thing I totally forgot to mention. On Naruto, I I might be wrong, but I think there were three instances of Believe It in that episode. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe, Maybe I should watch the episodes and try to keep count because that's what so many people complained about uh or about earlier episodes they they eventually stopped it later on because i think people complained but yeah there's a bunch of those there was some part i do remember there's a part where he literally said believe it i don't believe it <laughs> okay and there's also there's also one time where Narja says even i can't believe it <laughs> yeah. but that was a filler filler episode so it mm-hmm. doesn't count <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes fill, filler is usually not great, but sometimes you just do get some gold, some filler that's great. Usually the really funny, co- the goofy comedy ones. Like, a lot of people really like that Dragon Ball Z filler episode where Goku has to get a driver's license. Or <laughs> or the Naruto episodes where... um. They're trying to find out what's be under Kakashi's mask. A lot of people like that one. There's also, and I think this one people might have liked for, like, they might have enjoyed it for the wrong reasons, but the ones where the Shadow Clones get upset and go on strike. Hey, uh, that's that's the best one ever <laughs> it, it might it, it is good it might not be for the reasons that they were trying um to but it was just so bizarre it was pretty funny and i mean of course it does turn out to be a dream because it kind of has to because otherwise it brings up so many questions but just the yeah. shadow clones going on strike it is a pretty funny concept okay All right, I don't have anything else to add. So that'll be it for this episode. And 
next week we'll be back with the usual lineup. We we might be back for Toonami Rewind. We might not. Like I, I think that's probably going to be a more variable thing where sometimes we check it out, sometimes we don't. Yeah, I think I'm going to be watching it, but uh, it's up to you whether you feel you want to catch up on mm-hmm. it, you know. I have some interest. Um, the, the problem is that the time it airs isn't great for me, and it. And while ironically, you can say, "Well, you know, just watch it off," but it, it weird is is I don't know if this is the same for other people, but things always just take way longer for me to watch, like off because I'm because I always just pause it repeatedly to take some sort of break. Normally, um, it just, uh-huh. I, I just have trouble. It, when that's an option, I keep doing it. When it's on TV, I can't pause it, so it just keeps going. So we'll see. Like I said, we're not committing to anything. We might keep it going. I, I, you, you're, I'm talking about myself. I might or might not. Um, yeah, sorry to be so ambivalent, but I, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, nothing else to really say. I should, as usual, just try to cut it off before I embarrass myself longer with all of these things. So, with that said, we'll see you next time. Bye!